Hello and welcome to my guide to version 6 equivalent exchange featuring the mechanics of the energy collector, energy condenser, and the antimatter relay. I will go into as much depth as I possibly can regarding these three machines. As you can see right here, I have my craft guide up and I have the recipe for the energy collector Mark 1 up here. And as you can see, there's a second level of this, an upgrade that requires dark matter, and a first level one. And then there is a Mark III. And then you can see over here that the Antimatter Relay requires a level one energy collector. And as the Antimatter Relay itself has three levels as well. And you need the Mark I make the Mark II and Mark II make the Mark III. Some red matter and dark matter for each. And now, I'm not going to be crafting those today. I have my items here. I have everything set up most for the most part and everything I need to uh, go into greater detail about these machines. And I, here I am going into as much detail as I can about the relays and the collector's behavior when adjacent to one another. What I have here is I have a Mark 1 relay, Mark 2 relay, and a Mark 3 relay. I also have a Mark 1 energy collector, a Mark 2 energy collector, and a Mark 3 energy collector. And of course I have a few energy condensers as well. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to place a Mark 1 on the ground. There we go. And the ability to smelt items into the raw EMC still exists. You take any item, take a bookshelf, there you go, turns right into EMC. This EMC is stored, and you can take it to Lightning Star and remove it by putting it here in the lightning bolt. Or it will pass along to an energy collector or condenser if it has something to produce. Now I'm going to move along to the bonuses and how the mechanics work when a relay is adjacent to an energy collector. So if I put down an energy collector right here next to the relay, this energy collector now is passing this EMC into this relay. The energy produced per second by a energy collector Mark 1 is 4. That all four will be passed in the relay and stored inside its internal storage. Also, relays produce bonus EMC based on the number of faces that are powered or, or adjacent to an energy collector. That's one of the term I like to use, powered. So this side is powered. This relay, because it's Mark 1, will get a plus 1. If I were to lay down a second re relay, it would take its EMC it produces and put it into the relay and the relay would also generate an additional point of EMC because it has yet another re relay has yet another collector next to it so this would be producing the relay will be giving itself two extra EMC and each one of the relays will be putting its EMC into the relay if I were to put a, another relay say here, I have put down a Mark II. A Mark II relay has higher internal storage. Now also, the bonus it gets for having an energy collector next to it is greater. This, ener this relay will gain an extra three energy per second because it has one energy collector next to it. Yes, the bonus is three per side. So if I put a second one energy collector down here and it would get an additional three more EMC in the relay. The bonus of the relay has is dependent on the relay only. So this these being tier one collectors has no effect on the bonus of the the Mark II relay. So you could put a Mark III and then have Mark One. You put a Mark III relay down and have Mark One energy collectors surrounding it. 
and the Mark III would get its bonus per side. Now, another thing to note is that relays cannot pass enter EMC from one to another. So, this relay will not pass any EMC whatsoever to this one here in the middle. Neither will this one. Neither one of these will pass any EMC to this. The only machines that relays will pass energy to are energy collectors that are producing fuel, energy condensers that have a target item, or furnaces, red matter or dark matter furnace. There we go, I'll show you here. Get my dark matter furnace, put it down here. And I will put let's put it right here. Got some logs, so I'll just draw some logs in there. You can see the furnace without has no fuel. It's being fueled purely by the EMC from the relay. Also this will also energy collectors will pass their energy to dark matter or a red matter furnace to power it as well. Right here. When an energy collector is adjacent to two relays, like this in this setup right here, this energy collector will split its EMC produced evenly as possible. So in this case, if there's two and it produces four, each one will get two. These relays will not will pr still produce their bonus EMC regardless of the fact that they share this collector. So this because this is a Mark II, this one will get three bonus. And as a Mark One, it'll get one bonus. Now, if I were to put another relay down next to the collector, so I'll just put a Mark Three down. Since this collector's EMC will now be split three ways, as evenly as possible, and then this Mark Three will get its bonus because it has an energy collector adjacent to it, and the Mark Three bonus is six per six per side covered by energy collector. And let's see. And if you were to do four or six sides, like I said, the, the energy that's produced would try to be split as evenly as possible between all sides, all relays ad adjacent. Also, the same goes for the furnaces. If a furnace was here, it would split and give the EMC between all objects evenly. Now, these machines are the most direct way in which to get EMC. The energy collector, as you can see, collects, based on sunlight level, EMC per, per second. And each tier of energy collector produces a specific amount of EMC per tier. The Mark I collector collects four EMC per second. The Mark II produces 12 EMC per level, and the Mark III produces 24 EMC per level. And as you see, if you do not have anything targeted or any fuel in the collector, it'll just accrue a certain amount of passive EMC to a certain amount. And once you actually put an item in here of fuel, it will upgrade it to the, it will use, immediately use all the CMC to upgrade it to the highest level it possibly can. And within, when you take an energy collector and you put it adjacent to an energy, energy condenser, right now I don't have anything targeted in the target lock. So the energy is just accruing in the energy collector. Once I put a target here, the energy from the collector will transfer to the condenser, powering the item creation of the condenser. As you can see, creating myself 
me a s stone, quite a bit of stone, very fast. Now if we check here, we can see that this collector is no longer uh, accumulating EMC. And neither is this one. Oops. Neither is this one. Nor this one. And also I have one, I, I, you might be able to see it back there behind the energy condenser. I have another, uh, uh, a fifth one. As the energy condenser can be surrounded by energy collectors. I don't put them on the face here just for ease of access. I could put an energy collector here and then take it off and access it, but it's just easier this way, I think. And you can see I already have a row and a half of stacks of stone. Yes, and this is the easiest, most simple way, and not not the optimal, but the, sh the easiest and most straightforward way to power a condenser. Like that. And the great thing about the condenser I don't have to target stone. I can target any block I want. Let's see, I have some a chest of blocks right here. Let's see. I can get me some wood, TNT, diamond. And as you can see, the condenser is accruing at EMC from the collectors until it has enough to create the block that's in the target. And once it does, it will deposit he here into its inventory. There you go. Now condensers, they have only one level. Uh, they don't get any better. They just this is this is it. As you can see here, the golden tube here has a progress bar. It's showing me how much. It's how much more it needs to finish. Almost done. TNT, I believe, is right around a thousand EMC value. There you go. And there's my block of TNT. Now, if I let this go, I can just let it go and walk away. As you can see down in my little hallway here, I have a few other energy collector setups going. And uh, just to demonstrate how the different facings. You can put in the floor here and have energy condenser in the floor and then energy collectors around it. Energy collectors require light to be used. Each level of energy collector will produce a certain amount of light and it is actually a static amount. Like the Mark 1s will produce the equivalent of half a torch light. The Mark 2 produces three-quarter torch light and a mark three produces full sunlight and that's just in full sunlight is will power this hundred percent right now as you can see it's daylight and I have some blocks here blocking this so this is not at hundred percent if I wanted it to be so I just could put a close stone block like I did over there on on top 